Yes, I will speak to it. Uh, the, with some recent legislation, there are some new requirements uh, for the district safety plan, and then there's some new requirements for building safety plans. Building safety plans are not uh, uh, allowed to be made public, so there's a template for our building principals to complete with their safety teams, and they'll submit that to the state, but those are not made public. However, our district plan requires a 30-day comment period uh, before the board can adopt and so today we'll start that 30-day period uh, and a couple of major changes in the district safety plan actually there's three that I can speak to one is um, that uh, they want to make it very clear that the superintendent or superintendent's designees serve as the chief emergency officer for the district and are responsible for coordinating communication between school staff and law enforcement first responders so that um, they said that clearly and I've inserted that in our plan two or three places where someone might look and say like okay so who's, who's really supposed to be in charge two other changes are around um, uh, the ways the timing and the ways we contact parents when there's an emergency and uh, we do use school messenger I think that's our most efficient tool and so there's some language on Oops, the page numbers are not on there. It's under number six. Um, and then the other, so that's a second change. And then the other changes are around, and I will put page numbers on this before you see it again. I apologize for that. Are around um, students who um, threaten themselves or others, and there's a lot of language and, and specific requirements there. And so there's, um, there's, and all this language is in red, so if you're cruising through the document, that's what you can look for. It's about, I'm going to say halfway through, um, and it's a number three suicide threat uh, towards the bottom of the page. And it talks about how we will handle those, and then also threat of, threats of violence, direct or indirect, <coughs> and a th having a threat assessment protocol. We already do that in our buildings. Uh, when something happens, uh, Josh, Jeannie, or John get their teams together, usually depending on how the level of the threat or um, you know, whatever they're considering, level of emergency, then I'll be brought in right away. However, sometimes I think they just do it right at their building to say, like, what's the threat and what are we going to do about it? I think um, one key piece that we learned this last year is about when students are threatened who do we inform uh, regarding the threat? Do we inform the parents of the students who are threatened? And when do we inform them? And the students who are threatened. So, but again, it all goes into a threat assessment protocol. So those are the major changes. I also, after I sent this to you, and I think it was maybe Friday, or it was probably Friday afternoon, received another memo from the state and I honestly didn't get a chance to go click on the link and see if there's more guidance or more requirements, but I will do that. And, and so if there's updates, I will bring those into the plan before you adopt in September. So do they have a copy of the red in it? Because what I provided they, didn't have They, red. Um, well, it was, um, we don't have the red, I'm sorry. Okay. 
well, you will you will be sent to me shortly. So I'm wondering if you can have some facts, but I'm hoping you do. This is I think you gave me a paper version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'll bring it to your attention. I'll put numbers on the pages and, and highlight where you should look. But those are the major changes. The designation of the superintendent, how we communicate with parents in emergency and then students who threaten themselves or others, and then how we handle those threats. Those are the major changes. Okay. And my understanding is that some of these threats do not necessarily have to be only on the physical campus as they take place at home? Uh, I think any kind of a threat that we, okay. that we receive. Yeah. We'll post it on the district website as well, so people can read it. Okay. Any other questions? No comments. Oh, and Gary already caught that I left my back cock in there, so I took him out. <laughs> <He's> gone. <laughs> Oops. I, and I, I don't know how that happened because we're two years into this. But the name was kind of hanging. Okay. Then I need a motion to accept the plan as proposed. Well, uh, I think right so. at this time, I think it's just that um, this starts the clock really because you're not accepting it. It's not really. It may change with comment. Okay. Public comment. So or board are we comment. going to accept the draft? As you can accept the draft. Okay, then let's accept yeah. the draft as proposed because that's what we're going to put out there. So okay. moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, draft is accepted, Michael. Thank you. No, now we're moving on to correspondence. This no, is no. Okay. no. B. We've got B now. We've got it under, under the presentation. that are required by SED for food plans and for those new CTLE hours. Yep. So there was a couple things that um, I shared and I think it's, it, other than that, it looks great. I, I, um, I did forget under Roman numeral two, under program coordinators, um, their technology was not in there. So technology K-12. I, yeah. Okay. And foreign English. Now, since I tried it twice, I'm going to skip correspondence. We'll try to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get to the correspondence. Right. It's just so. Yeah. Okay, so this is from the State Municipal Facilities Program, and it's in reference to um, the grant that we have in order, in order to be able to redo the soccer field, correct? Right? Yes. Yes. In, in, okay. in January, Barbara Lipton uh, put our name in the hat, so to speak, with the Ways, House Ways and Needs Committee uh, to access DASNY bond funding to the amount of $200,000. And after and the board is familiar that this has been a zigzag journey, uh, that we first thought it would be one thing, and then they said, well, you're, well, and they said, well, you're already probably doing that uh, through, your tech, through the smart schools bond. So 
we went to another plan and they said, well, we might change it, but we, en we ended up on soccer field rehabilit rehabilitation and they are very pleased with that. And so they approved it there, it goes to the DASNY people. We got another set of correspondence, which I believe was sent to you. And um, under new business tonight, uh, the seeker type two designation approval by the board is key to moving the whole project forward. I know Joe's been working on this, and it's it's kind of like all these uh, efforts are on a parallel roadway moving together at the same time, and they're going to converge sometime in October, and they'll begin the work on the soccer fields. That's the goal. Yeah, that's yeah. the goal. So mm -hmm. tonight, the key piece is that you're aware that this is moving forward, this is the correspondence, and then when we get to new business uh, regarding the seeker type two designation resolution, we will ask for your approval of that. Okay. Any questions? All right. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, the first would be the policy committee. Douglas, you want to jump in here? Well, we met. We, we had new policies to look at. Uh, the, the first one was about custodial parents, and Jeannie was on vacation, and she gets the most of these, and so we knew we were going to reach out to Jeannie to talk about custodial parents and uh, who you communicate with, and I think it's things we already do, but, um, but this is a suggestion of it being in board policy. So we'll There's look at that. And I think there are already some yeah. things in board policy that Lots. I wanted to talk to you because I know you're one it's, it's usually you that deals with that. Well, Michael had also said that you already have a plan that, that you use, a process that you use. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we yeah. did not want to have a policy conflict with anything that you were already doing that was successful. Yeah. I think right. so. Thank you. And the, the other two policies we looked at really are reflected in the district safety plan and in the professional development plan. And um, there, it's, it's very important uh, to have a professional development plan anyway, but it's even more important now because with your approval of the plan, we can submit it through TEACH and the district professional development hours uh, or dis district superintendent's conference day and other professional development offerings can count. Uh, if we didn't have an approved professional development plan, our teachers would not be able to access those hours. So both of those uh, policies that we reviewed are coming to life through these other two mechanisms. And then we'll go back at our next policy meeting and look at custodial parents and and then look at the policy that supports the professional development plan and this district safety plan. All right, any questions regarding policies? Then the facilities advisory committee. Um, we've met, let me see, three, four times. Gone through each of the buildings. Um, barely, what? No, we're good. Okay. Sorry. You're good. We're good. Oh, okay. Um, fairly thoroughly looked at, uh, I guess, first, what, the middle school? Yeah. And, um, made note of how small some of the classrooms are in that building. Actually, I think at this point in time, they are smaller than allowed by law or state ed or something. Some of them are anyway. So clearly, we have some changes to make there. Um, then went through the high school and the elementary school. Um, and having viewed all three buildings and what went on in them, uh, the committee, of which Gary and I are not members, we just observe, um, came up with about seven variations on a theme, so to speak, um, of possible changes. One very unpopular one was to <laughs> move the elementary school to the middle school and the middle school to the elementary school. You can guess who was not happy about that. Um, another, <laughs> another was to um, destroy all three schools and build a new building. Uh, a third was to swap the elementary, uh, am I doing this right? The elementary and the middle school. Um, a 
fourth was to insert, uh, destroy the middle school and insert a middle school between the elementary school and the high school so that we sort of had one contiguous building, um, elementary, middle, and high. Uh, and I think at one point someone suggested scrapping all three and just building a new building. <laughs> And, you know, conversation has been pretty intense, and I think the community has been really very involved on their homework. Uh, the committee is great. Um, and we're at the point now where uh, I don't exactly know what we, what comes next. Michael? Uh, I, the only thing I would add is that any, any conversation about the middle school so far, which is, is just one of those options, is um, would preserve the building. Correct. Um, and, um, and we learned about all of our options about working with the community or other agencies to make sure that that building, regardless, if, if we were to not use it anymore, would, uh, would stay in our community as the proud tradition that it always has. At our next meeting is September 15th, and I think we're going to have a, I believe that's the date, uh, we'll have a, I think a very powerful meeting, and then one more meeting to look at the report, and then they will actually, the report will come to the board on November 14th. I would just yeah. add that, that I think one of the things that's been emphasized continually by the two consultants is um, what good shape our district is in financially, um, both in, in terms of ongoing programs, but also the amount of money that the district has been able to put into capital reserves um, that got a, a number of kudos, um, both in this meeting and in the previous month's meeting. And also, um, the, the number of, um, and diversity of the course offerings that we, we have for a small school district. So they were very complimentary of our Current program and uh, and our fiscal responsibility to the community. So I thought that was nice to hear. Also, to add that our population projections remain fairly stable in the long term, and that even though we're talking possibly finding 15 students in the district, that's one per grade level and doesn't necessitate the need or consolidated classes Thanks. any further. That seems like it's going along with oh, it is. Very lots of ideas. Was mm -hmm. the mention of a swimming pool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple of times, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 even though it wasn't hot enough to get here. We took a lot of temperature anyway. It was all come up with the hot ones. You too. It's that, that does, I think, raise an interesting point, part of which I, I got caught up in, in terms of the, the protocol for how these meetings um, operate is that the committee really is led by the consultants and does their work and there's a small amount of time at the end of each meeting for then the audience to offer suggestions. Um, but the only things that the committee and the consultants are going to consider are things that are actually proposed by a member of the committee. Um, so towards the end, as an example, I offered uh, a, a, a potential um, reconfiguration or solution in terms of or option for um, the building usage and programming and, and grade level configuration. And that comment would get in the minutes, but it was not going to be then offered as a potential um, option to be considered by the committee and put into the um, consultants report so um, I think that's important to note that that the committee members uh, both in terms of district committee members and community members have a I think a little greater responsibility to um, parse out some of the comments that are made by the public um, to make sure if they are of value such as a swimming pool um, that they would then get put into the recommendation in some form or another. I hope. I didn't want to sound self-serving, but <laughs> so the swimming pool sounds important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you and I were not colluding. That came. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank
things are pretty quiet at both seats. Do you want to talk to that? Right now, um, yeah, we're we're just going through um, staffing patterns and not not a whole lot coming from um, state ed except that there's nobody there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and you know, we're down to one architect. Uh, so again, that may make some changes to our building project plans. I don't know. Um, but summer school has been a success so far. Um, and of course, we are also looking at a building project, as we know. And just trying to figure out what configurations would work to expand the campus and being very careful about mixing student populations, which one has to be in a situation with a lot of special needs kids. Okay. All right, well, administrative support. I understand that Mr. Magioka has some update on some of those. It's good, it's often yes. around here. Yeah, we're, we're busy. Um, there's, you know, a lot of the projects that we talked about, the facilities committee are in process. Um, some of them I anticipate will finish and some of them will kind of straggle into the fall just a little bit just just because of manpower and staff taking vacations and stuff. Um, the concession stand has ramped up and we now have siding and soffit which is exciting. Um, the doors are on. Is, um, and we're starting the interior fit out now. So now uh, that's moving along and we're doing some, uh, the robotics over here at the old district office. We were looking at putting them over there. So there's a lot of projects that are still kind of just wavering that we're still ordering material for and, and um, still trying to make decisions on. Uh, but uh, for the most part, our projects are coming together. And I think it'll come down to the wire with getting them finished, but that's always how projects work out. So, but other than that, we're, we're doing well. I would just like to comment that the campus looks spectacular considering the summer we've had. I mean, yeah, it's been rough, it's, and I'm sure it's we've been dragging water cannons around yeah. everywhere trying to keep grass like partly alive. <laughs> It hasn't been easy. Um, sure. We got the village came over and had to shut it down a couple times. So, <laughs> but uh, <coughs> the rain that we got—it's amazing because I didn't work Friday, and the difference between the way the grass on the modified field looked on Thursday and the way that it does today is funny. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just amazing. Yeah. So, um, I like I like a little bit of rain. It's good for us. Most of those were put in by sod, though, weren't they? Yeah, that yeah, whole field was sod, oh, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So, if you're interested in more conversation about grass without Frank taking over, <laughs> I'd be more than happy to share. <laughs> <laughs> this is your opportunity. <laughs> That's right. But we demoed some equipment on Friday, uh, or Thursday, and it explains a lot of the problems that we've been having. Um, the thatch layer of the grass is really, really thick. So um, that answers a lot of the questions that we've had. So I'm pretty excited about that. And that's to be able to try to maintain the investment given the, the, the weather. Right. Yeah. And I'm assuming everybody realizes that at one point in time, Trimisburg was the driest point yep. in New York State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were. Yeah. Yeah, this summer. We had less than a half an inch of rain between June 1st and, I don't know, it was mid-July at some point, and yeah. we were the driest no. village, town, city, whatever, in the entire state. In terms of lack of rain. Yep. Because yeah. it was all around us, but it didn't come But us. it didn't hit us, yeah. You could see? And then as, a, as a question, sort of the opposite of completing projects, how are we coming in terms of getting rid of excess junk well i have had the dumpster at the bus garage emptied twice this summer <laughs> so we're making some progress some of the uh spaces that we talked about facilities we're still kind of wavering on you know, i don't i haven't unless my 
my guys are taking stuff out of the buildings that, that I'm not aware of. I don't know that there's been a ton of okay. stuff, but. So what you've been removing is trash? Uh, just, just stuff that no longer has value, that was either broken or, you know, not used. We've just been kind of, yeah, well, let's get rid of that. We haven't gotten the uniforms and such yet. No, no, not that I'm aware of. Do you know if we've gotten the uniforms? I'm not aware of uniform trash Joe, or just, donation. Sorry, I just had a question about, you said robotics is going to go over in that building? Potentially. We, we um, have been working with robotics to meet their needs mm -hmm. in the space because the current space that they're in at the high school um, doesn't meet code um, for what they're using it for. So. We've been going back and forth. What, what can we do with them? Where can we put them? Um, and so we met with uh, Brad Farnham from the robotics group over there. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know, how would this work for your program if we were to if we were to give you a portion of this building? And he felt like it would work out pretty good. So, um, and we, we did some demos. So if you go in that building, like all the walls are gone, except for just a couple. So, because we were going to convert it to storage, yeah. right? right. And so, oh, well. <laughs> so now we're thinking that that would be a great place to put the robotics program because, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's safe. It's safe for for kids to be over there now because I think there's some flooding. Yeah, and stuff that was not so that was that was before me, but from what I understand, um, it was eradicated. There wasn't mold like. They cut the bottom nice. of the wall off, and um, and we corrected the drainage issue back there, so there should we shouldn't have any flooding problems. So this would be just for their use alone. It would well, be perfect. just just a portion of that space. We're still going to use some of it for storage, but a portion of that space, which is bigger than where they're currently at, um, we would allow them to use it. And, it would be their space, and there wouldn't be conflicts with space yeah. with other groups, and um, it would allow them the freedom to do other things that yeah. that, that they would like to do in the space. So. The, the 2014 capital project, as they redid a lot of fields and all that, one of the major things they did was to create drainage there. And even though we've had not this year certainly, but last year. We had significant rainfall yeah. to the point where we were meeting with the village officials about uh, actually a, a drain uh, outlet through the other side of, I mean, of Main Street down there. Yeah. And so we knew we had a lot of rain, but we did not have problems in the work building, similar to what you experienced. Mm -hmm. So we were confident in that part yeah. of the drainage on the back side of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay. Any changes to the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. any, any items you want to pull back? Okay, then I'll mm -hmm. I was interested in just hearing more discussion around B. Can you pull that? I don't know if we discuss that. Okay. Any other items that we pull out from the consent agenda? Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda minus items B. So moved. Any second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Do you have Okay, let's look at item B of the consent agenda. Approval to increase teaching assistant positions by 3.0 full time. So moved. Second? Okay. So I'll speak to this and principals can chime in. We had a long conversation at um, the first day of our retreat about um, professional development, the need for substitutes, and um, and doing it in a different way. And, and really, we were brainstorming. Kind of the theme of the day is like how crazy an idea can be. <laughs> and somewhere in there, uh, we thought about the idea of having teaching one teaching assistant assigned to each building to um, every day. So that would be their their workstation, that's where they would report to, um, to work. And they would be assigned to be the, the first call substitute for that building, as well as be a resource for um, 
if a teacher needed to uh, participate in a professional development, that they could help out by something in their classroom, or um, if they were to go to conferences, anytime we could do professional development, that they would be that person who would provide some substitute coverage for that classroom teaching assistance. As we understand it, can, they can serve as substitutes. So, um, so that conversation kind of rolled along and, and uh, through the morning and then Kimberly mentioned that uh, due to some uh, breakage and some work with the Title I grant that we could fund three teaching assistant positions. There was loud cheering in the room for several minutes and then when it calmed down, uh, we kept thinking about it. We actually thought about it for another day or two and, and we believe we can do this, although I will say that we are struggling finding teaching assistants. Uh, we have a we have one opening right now and we've been struggling finding someone. I mean it's not like we're getting a lot of applicants. However, we did have a lot of teachers apply this oh. summer who may be interested in that if you don't have a teaching position she might take a teaching assistant position. So that's the rationale behind that. I know South Seneca has dedicated substitutes. I don't know whether they're, whether they're teaching assistants or regular teaching credential people, but we want to try this. So that's why we're asking for the board to approve this. We can fund it. We think it, um, we were talking this afternoon about supporting our teachers in professional development. This may be one way that we can do that, that if there's someone dedicated to each building to help provide uh, class relief. So people can be like, go observe another teacher perhaps. Um, or we actually just started the list of the ways we can utilize them. Uh, will they be limited to a specific building? I, would they be, I think we'll coordinate. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we have yeah, uh, enough GB DIS or data review days, perhaps all three of them head over to the elementary school. So we'll coordinate it. One thing, one comment that we did make is that if they're um, assigned on Tuesday to help us with professional development that we would we would use them for, for professional development and, and make that a priority rather than always pulling them from those those um, opportunities to substitute for other teachers. So we, we, we were dedicating them first to professional development. Yeah, I can imagine that. Those folks could be pulled for seven All situations probably every day. Oh, building you know. subs is common in other and districts. So yeah. I guess I would love to just see, just have a follow-up conversation in you know six to eight weeks just to say, so how is it going? Are they being used like we intended? Because um, I truly do think that that's, that's a great, I think it's a great idea for helping to support our teachers to collaborate. Um, you know, within the day as well, but I would love to just see how it's going in a few weeks. Well, and related to that is uh, we had our substitute incentive plan and uh, Tina reported that there was a lot of people that took advantage of that. There were more yeah. people getting to the 20, was it 20 days before the 20 days. So there was, um, so that worked. Mm -hmm. One of those things, it was an our, our idea and we think it worked. And then as well, the Board of Regents uh, has, has expanded the number of days that a non-certified uh, individual mm -hmm. can yeah. teach. To, to 90, I believe. Yeah. And uh, I will say that uh, Truman Bird held fast to that role, so it's a relief for us. I talked to other districts and they said, well, you don't know, really get caught till the auditor looks it over, but that's not the way we have done business, so it will be a benefit to us. We have, we have some people who would sub more if we would allow them, and how they would be allowed to do that. So, should be a better year looking ahead with those two things in mind. How does the rate of a teacher assistant on a daily basis compare to what we pay for a substitute? On a daily basis? Or? I, I don't, I'm guessing it is not. Uh, well, I, just, I don't know. I just don't have any money. I have to So we're paying them in a teacher assistant rate, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And with the idea that they're being used to substitute. And for right. professional development. Professional development. So, so and, 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 and or if there's, you know, if we have a day where there's no sub, because we have days where we'll have two, three right. teachers out and no sub coverage, so they would be the first to draw for that. Um, but first and foremost, we don't want to draw them away from if we have a teacher out because of staff development. You know, that's the idea is to be able to cover so a teacher can do staff development. But 
the problem that we're having is, is that we're denying teachers the ability to go to staff development because we don't have sub coverage for them. So, or when we have teachers that are out and we can't cover them because they're out, we're paying our own people internally at $20 a period, which is substantially more than what we pay for a sub. Mm -hmm. Or of this rate. Or worse, the person can't attend the professional development that we've signed them up for because we don't have enough coverage. So when they're forced to stay it's really within the building. We usually have to wait till the morning of the event and then assess and then let them know that they're allowed to go or not. <laughs> okay. So wait, I, awesome. I, Great uh, I have certified sub is eighty five dollars a day? I've looked at it just because I was curious and a teaching assistant will make less annually than a right. certified teacher that comes in and subs every day. Yeah, that's right. The difference is there's guaranteed work every day. That's, yes. that's yeah. it. And they, they could, and they could get benefits. So a TA is roughly 17,000? 16,000. 16-ish. Okay. So, so I just did 17 without the benefits. That comes up to be about $94 a day over 180 days. The certified so sub is 86. Nice. Then they go up to a test. 100, 100 after 20 days. Yeah. This person would not go up to 100, right. but yet they have benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm only yeah. asking the question in terms of after at the end of this year, I think we ought to look to see how much money we've spent and how effective this has been. Because if you put benefits into this, that that bumps this person's salary up to potentially 30. Not salary. It, it bumps the amount of money the district is spending up to thirty thousand dollars. So if we took three of these people and said we're now increasing substitute <coughs> salaries to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars a year, what would that potentially draw in terms of people wanting to come and sub to the district? I mean, because that's how much more money we're putting into substitutes is a hundred thousand dollars with these people. I think that's definitely an, uh, something that we should look at, but I also think, and I'm guilty of saying this many times, that I think we have tapped out this community locally in terms of people that are just looking to come and sub on a daily basis. So even when we offered to pay more, we were still not successful in attracting more subs. We're this still short. Part, part of the, the goal of having this person on staff and as a, as a member of our team in the buildings is that with the PD, it's predictable. We know when the person is planning to go out, that they're able to collaborate with the teacher prior to and leading up as opposed to a sub situation where it's the morning of. And that and they can deliver instruction under the guidance of the teacher. So when the teacher goes out, the continuity of instruction continues moving forward, 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 not I have a movie and a worksheet. That's the biggest thing. So from that standpoint, sure. that person is, they're reliable, they're consistent, they know the kids, they, and they are invested in the overall outcome of the student mm -hmm. learning. So, How often do we send a single person to professional development as opposed to more than one? From time to time. I don't know if I have that. I don't have that in yeah, I don't have the statistics. We can look through them. Okay. Okay. I got, you know, one piece that I would like to, um, I don't know if we've started about getting reimbursed through BOCES. Um, if, we, if we receive reimbursement for substitutes through any school improvement, professional development at BOCES, then I guess that would, we, we would want to deduct that savings from right. the cost of these three people. Yep. Um, and we're tracking that now. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Is actually it's easy, isn't it? Easier than one. Good. She's a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any We're excited to report back at the end of the year. Yeah. 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 Report back in like two months. <laughs> <laughs> so school started. Yeah, track for now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how much do, do you have off the top of your head? Anyway? <laughs> That's That's a for Marie's question. Yeah. How much we spend on substitutes a year? Oh, uh, If you don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm just. Um, I, I want to say it's well over $200,000. Okay, good, thanks. Um, and that's it's a, a moving number because sometimes we have sure. long term subs. Sure. Um, sometimes we have multiple people out on long term medical. And then other times it's just a um, day to day people being out. So it's, it's a really difficult line to budget for. Yeah. And, Thank you. and the $20 an hour coverage is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's 
so we can be able to cover it. Right. Oh, yes. It's huge in what sense, Jane? It's a lot. It's of used a lot. So for, so for example, if I am a gen ed teacher and I have a co-teacher that is special education and if my co-teacher is out that day, I would submit, I, and we can't find a sub, then I would submit for sub coverage and get paid an additional $20 per period. And so you can see if there's seven to nine periods, that's far greater than if I had a certified substitute in-house at $86 yeah. for the day. Contract. It's in contract. Mm -hmm. It's a $20 per period. We're grateful mm -hmm. that people are willing yeah. to yeah. sub in yeah. for yeah. other people <laughs> to, to allow for that coverage. Mm -hmm. But we just, you know, when we're looking at the big picture of finances, we, we want to get the best coverage. We want to allow people to have those professional development opportunities. And at the same time, we want to be able to cover for that, you know, parent that has a child that's very ill that particular day. So, Well, as Josh pointed out, not only is it consistency in teaching, but I also think it's a lot easier when you know you've got somebody in house that can be plugged in right now because here's the problem. Because not all of your subs knows the spell schedule. Yeah. Knows the curriculum. Yeah. Knows the staff, knows the kids. building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has resources. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Direct motion is motion carried. Aye. Okay, moving on to new business. Okay, item A refers back to the State Environmental Quality Review Act. So I need a motion. So moved. A second? Second. Okay, do we need any additional discussions? Are there any additional questions? What might I have this way? We won't have an opportunity to put a letter that we're, I think this is just jumping through hoops for the state so that we can get it go. It is. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? For any extensions. Okay, motion Yes. All right. <laughs> Section A and Section A2. Okay. The next A on the agenda is the adoption of the contract with the unadopted Cortland Madison. No, nope. yeah, no, I think Michael's renumbered. Yeah, I, when so I put in my, that's my fault. When oh, I added okay. some red language, it said, oh, we must need a new letter. Okay. So stick with oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the annotations. Okay. okay. Scratch that. The B, the new B. Is the adoption of the contract with the unadopted court and Madison Board of Cooperative Education Services. Did it open? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Uh, Michelle, you have a question? No, I don't. Okay. Any <laughs> comments? Michael, do you want to address any of this? We um, all know why we're doing this. I, I, I think this one is more. Let me just make sure. I got to make sure I'm reading. Michelle, we have a contract with unadopted court and Madison. Oh, this is the techniques. Yeah, actually, if Michael's here. Uh, this is easy. It's how we are procuring because I, I, it's not a purchase when it's a lease. This is how we procure iPads, Chromebooks, smart boards. Uh, we're going to switch out the. I have Michael in my head. You can see. Uh, we're going to switch out the CAD lab in the high school to, uh, and I don't even know what this would be, but engineering level computers for our students to um, work with as they learn CAD. Um, and you're what doing, else? You're doing great. I bet I'm done. Chromebook, <laughs> <laughs> Starboards, CAD lab, maybe a new uh, video projection system in one of the school rooms. That's, that's really the highlights. It's, it's, it's not a lot of uh, wild, crazy stuff. It's really just more stuff, mostly in the elementary school, middle schools. So a lot of one-to-one -one technology going into the hands of kids. Where are we with our one-to-one -one initiative of technology into the hands of kids? Sort of lost track. It's just what we do now. Every, well, that's what I'm asking. At the high school, at the high school so level. So everybody has one. At the high school level, every kid has an iPad. Okay. And has so for the last, I mean, this is going to be fourth year. 
So it's it's completely integral to what we do. And like the the teachers of the ninth grade are always wondering how quickly can we get the students their iPads. The the long term discussion is really more of one of shifting towards a bring your own device kind of plan. Um, I, I would expect that in the next two or three years, Michael and I will be having a conversation about shifting to more of a bring your own device plan because when I walk into classrooms about, I don't know, Marie, what did you say? Like, there's usually a third of the class that has a laptop out in front yeah. of themselves or. And like when we do things that involve the iPads, a lot of people use their phones anyways because yeah. people don't charge them, but it's definitely useful to have for people that can't afford laptops and don't have smartphones. It's, when you walk into classrooms, there's kids are using technology in almost every class. The question is whether it's their iPad, whether it's the laptops, whether it's something else right in the classroom. But technology is just what we do now. It's like bringing a pen to class. Are teachers still using um, Edmodo and any other learning platforms? Yes. Or in just every single class and then we have Edmodo. In a lot of sports programs, you have Edmodo. A lot. And at the middle school, we don't go one to one in their hands. We're aiming for a, a one to one equivalent in the instructional setting so that they're not wandering throughout the building with their iPads. Um, right now, we're around nine or ten rooms that are equipped well enough to be a one to one access point. Uh, we've got about seven others that are partial, so it's a two or three to one device room. So we're, we're, and when the new lease comes through, then those rooms should be bumping out. So we'll be getting probably about 80% of the classrooms will be one-to-one -one accessible and then the sharing of devices. So we're, we're well on our way. Do we have any plans to bring this down to the elementary school? Well, we have um, classroom sets in the classrooms. Um, we have iPads and Chromebooks, um, and we're, Kind of talking with teachers about what they want to use for which one and how to give them enough so that all their students have them. So we're well on our way to not to one to one because that can, in the classroom that's a great idea. Yeah. Walking around with them, not. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we, we're very very fortunate to have the technology. John, what happens to them when they graduate? They get turned in and recycled turn back over to Mike's team and those that are in nice clean working condition are rehabilitated and utilized elsewhere and those that are not usable after surviving three or four years in the hands of a high school student are generously recycled <laughs> through Apple Care. So is that a pretty accurate statement? Pretty accurate. Yeah. By the age of the other tools sometimes we can get them repaired by Apple sometimes are too old for that. And we're, we're, we're just take them decommissioned by the service. But anything we kept in service is kept in service and repurposed usually in an elementary school or middle school classroom. Mm -hmm. I'm extending their lines. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed to attention? Okay, I'm going to carry. Uh, moving on to item C. Uh, the abolishment of the vacant position. I have a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay. Any questions about what we do? Okay. And we initially. Brought it was a, it was actually a position that we had created, thinking that that would fulfill our uh, career career teacher right. on special so assignment, and, and then we found out that it. that it really needed to be a counselor. Okay. So we. You had created that, and yeah, we're 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 we have the power of it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed restrictions? Okay, motion Seconds of donation. I need a motion here. Second. Second. Okay, this is from the UTCSD for $2,250 to individual teachers and community members for unrestricted use. The hoop house and classroom. And Thousand dollars to the art department for the mosaic mural <laughs> two project. That's okay. In fact, I think that the, the mural is going along the pace, isn't it? Have they started? Have they started work the, installing it? Oh, the mural. Uh, it's so heavy. It's going it, to take a crane, it but it's, 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 it's come along. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they haven't grounded it. Yeah, it's a ground. It's growing. Without ground. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be really really amazing. But it's very heavy. It's I think it's in, yeah. in the back it's of the art room. Yeah. Yeah. And Alan's yeah. back of her art room. Yeah. And it's going to be installed with right here. Mm -hmm. Just see it out there on the other side of the wall out there. Up there the gymnasium entrance. Yeah. This fall. And whose house is there any place out in the middle school? Yep. With plans there. They're growing. And one. <laughs> <laughs> the cool pass. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Did I ask for a motion? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed or abstention? Okay. Motion. Oh, another another donation. Okay. This is from the Mary Brown Playhouse of thirteen hundred eighty-five dollars to general fund arts. So, I need a motion. So, so moved. And a second. Second. Okay. It's going to be called the Gary and Douglas Show here. If you Somebody else speak up. Second. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Other than to say thank you very much to Mary Brown Theater from Playhouse. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstention? Motion carried. Okay. And the next item is the adoption of the tax warrant. Do you have a motion? I'm not speaking. So we'll tax warrant. And a second. I'll second. Okay, good. Well, we're just moving from the opposite of Michelle. Okay. All right. Kimberly, would you like to explain? Uh, we do this every year. Uh, I mentioned earlier today that. Uh, the tax rate for $1,000 of assessed value is actually decreasing, and that is due in, in part, uh, mostly, due to a reevaluation of all of Tompkins County. So uh, this year's tax rate is the same for all areas, over Hector and Ulysses and the village of Teberg, and that's being set at 1826 per $1,000 of assessed value. Questions, comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. No questions, then motion carried, and it's nice to see that it's going in the right direction. <laughs> okay. Do we have anything to work for us that's good to be ordered? And then we talk about it. I want to mention that we do have uh, the three committees this Thursday uh, athletics at eight. Uh, community engagement at 9 and facilities at 10. So, and I'll send out a reminder, but uh, add that right now. This afternoon we had great discussion and I yeah. um, think a lot of worthwhile thoughts to move the district forward. Thank you to everybody for that. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Then um, I need a motion to adjourn to a budget session that is regarding to um, appointment, promotion, devotion, discipline, expansion, dismissal, or removal of the person, person, or corporation. So moved. Okay. Fine. Second. 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 Second.